Hi guys, my name is Dylan, and a while back I went through all of my Final Cut Pro titles, effects, generators, and transitions, and I found 10 effects that you possibly have never heard of, but that could prove useful to future videos you make. So all of these effects can be found in the effects browser right here, obviously. And the first one I'm going to show you is called frame. So you plop this on any shot you have and basically it uh, scales down your shot and puts a frame around it. And you have a bunch of options for different frames. Before I knew about this, I was creating my own frame with a custom generator, which was incredibly annoying. So this definitely came in handy for me. The next effect is very similar. It is called photo recall. So essentially what this does is it duplicates duplicates your shot, it has your original shot blurred, and it includes a scaled down version of your shot, and it puts a little frame around it. And you can change the amount, you can change the style, which I quite like this instant, it's kind of like a Polaroid version, and then you can change the, um, the amount of the blur in the background, as well as the contrast, or I suppose it just adds a little bit different hue, like a bluer hue. The next effect we have is called visual echo, and essentially what this does is adds a slight delay in motion in your shots which could be useful for maybe scenes in films where someone is disoriented or possibly horror films why do i feel like something bad is happening to me oh my god msg this one is probably rare to use, but nevertheless, you have it. The next effect we have is an effect called vibrancy. And to be honest, I haven't used this in a video because I kind of enjoy color grading. But if you're in a pinch and you need to pump out a video as fast as you can, essentially this adds a little extra contrast and saturation to your shot. You also have an option here that says protect skin. So for example, using it on this shot of my ugly mug, if I increase the saturation a little bit, you'll notice it turns my skin orange. And if we click protect skin it kind of brightens it up and takes out a little bit of that saturation there a good usage of this could be if you're wanting to export some clips out for stock footage and your footage is color balanced correctly you just need to add a little bit more contrast and saturation this can help with that Next we have an effect called streaks, which if you watched my video last week on the flickering glitch text effect, you'll know about this one. Essentially it adds kind of a fake anamorphic streak to it. This is just a picture here, but it'll take the brightest spot in the image and then it'll add this, this ana anamorphic streak and you can change the color of it as well. I would just leave it on blue if I were you, but you can change the angle too, you can change the, the glow of it, the amount, you have quite a bunch of different options here however it's important to keep in mind that if you do put this on a shot that's very bright and has a lot of highlights it will blow out all of your shot and put in that streak flipped is the next effect and it does exactly what you would expect it to it flips your image uh, but something to keep in mind is if you have text in your shot it will flip the text and make that text backwards or unreadable but you can you have a couple different options here you can change the direction of your text as well and the amount which can be cool if you are animating a photo somehow or you are kind of angling a photo but you can also use the distort tool so um, I usually just use this for the normal flipped effect with it all the way up to 100 next we have an effect called letterbox and what this does is add cinematic fake cinematic black bars to your image and you have a bunch of different options for the aspect ratios with the most common cinema equivalent being 2 by 35 by 1 I'm probably saying that wrong 235 by 1 I'm not exactly sure if you guys know let me know in the comments below but something to keep in mind for this is if you are using a transition between two shots so for example this smooth zoom it is going to mess up your uh, your letterbox so what you would do is add an adjustment layer over top and add the letterbox effect to that adjustment layer and then it would not mess up in this transition process Isolate is an effect that takes out the saturation from certain parts of your image and this is fairly obsolete considering we can do this with the hue saturation curves that we have now but it is a fairly useful tool if you have a basic shot that you want to take out the saturation from and it isolates either the skin of a person or everything else so basically it'll take the kind of the oranges tan colors and uh, desaturate everything else or it'll do the opposite of that desaturate the skin and then keep everything else saturated. 
Crop and Feather crops your shot and lets you quickly adjust the height and the width of your crop. It'll introduce some feathering as well if you would like softer edges. But uh, obviously you can use the shape mask here. This is just uh, kind of a, another alternative to that. The last effect is called handheld and essentially this gives your shot more of a handheld look and it by just adding some controlled shake to it. So this could be useful if you have your shot in a tripod and you're say recording yourself but you want it to look like someone else is recording you. This will add some nice controlled shake to it. That looks that's definitely a little bit too much but uh, you can change the shakiness as well as the distance here. So if I do make this a crazy amount which I don't know why anyone would ever do. <laughs> that, obviously that looks a little nuts. Let's pull it out and make it something realistic. So it just adds a little bit of handheld shake. Hopefully at least one of these was new to you and I would love to hear which one you'd use the most. So let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you next week.